This video shows the IPAC insertion and engagement simulation. The first step that's going to occur is the robots are going to drill one or more holes for the retention pins in the pipe. After the holes have been drilled, the assembly or system, the IPAC system, will be lowered from the surface and stabilized by a robot for the initial insertion process. When the first alignment struts enter the uh, pipe, they're going to be protracted mechanically to stabilize the system. At that point in time, the robot will be able to, that stabilizing the system upon entry, will be able to disengage and allow a weighted structure from the surface attached to the IPAC assembly to continue inserting the assembly into the pipe. Once the second alignment struts are in the pipe, they'll be mechanically engaged and basically sprung open with a very heavy spring and locked at a 90 degree position relative to the main uh, tubular superstructure of the IPAC system. At that point, the system will be further inserted so that the, the retention flange is past the, uh, the retention pin insertion hole that the robots drilled. At that point in time, the robots will insert the retention pin and then back off and allow the retention flange to butt up against that pin to hold the system in place. After the structure is locked in place, the weighted structure, which helps provide force to insert the assembly, will be removed. And again, it's important to note during this process that the oil blow-by, uh, based on this design, will reduce the amount of insertion force required to insert this device into the pipe. And again, it's still going to require a significant amount of force to insert the pipe uh, insert the IPAC system, but again, we're not trying to completely cut off the flow of oil while this is happening. Next, uh, any, there's a, any number of means can be used to disengage the center plunger system, which uh, could be basically tethered to some device to unlock it, which the robots can grab and then basically track to disengage, um, to basically unlock the center structure, which is flashing yellow now, which slides inside the superstructure, which is colored red here. Uh, when that happens, of course, the valve will be closed by the force of oil pressure acting on it. And again, the red strut uh, down this area right here will provide the torque as this valve is pushed backwards and the center plunger, which it pivots on, moves backwards. Uh, this strut here will apply torque, closing torque to the valve to close it shut. If for some reason the valve does not close all the way, you've got a mechanical backup uh, where the robots can come in and then uh, use this uh, threaded nut type device to come down and extract the center plunger assembly if it has to to fully close the valve. The design of the IPAC system could actually be more advanced where you'd actually hollow out the center tube of the plunger assembly and actually allow oil to flow through the center of it, which uh, could be enabled by allowing a valve to be placed in the center of this pivoting valve head here. So when the valve head closes, it opens up a path to the center tube. That would allow the robots to attach a collection system, uh, another valve to the uh, output of the IPAC system, and actually collect oil and route it to the surface ship.